be um looking at it setting up your meeting cool 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 um let's see done redirecting the facebook live video right all right all right all right we all are right. live tonight we are live tonight yes. we are live tonight and all welcome right. to another edition uh okay. to the ask us, us. relationships part two i want to introduce right. to you all the host of this show uh sister vanya harris hey everybody good evening happy friday Woo! <laughs> I would like to introduce you guys to Reverend Skinner. Oh man, you're too kind. You're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> yes. Too kind. Yes, I'm excited about tonight. Uh, Me too. It's Friday. I don't know if it's payday for some people, uh, but it's an exciting time. It's Friday. The weekend is uh, here, and man, it's I'm here. looking to have a good time. Uh, yes, let's have is a good tell time, you, guys. Sister Vanya gonna tell you her true uh, Hollywood e life story tonight, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we all have a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Reverend Skinner, he's actually an author as well, so I think some of us have stories that's worth publishing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> let's just have Back a story. In May. Oh, she got me on that. Oh man. Well, I bow down gracefully and I have nothing to say, but I'm excited about tonight, man. Uh, last yes. week we talked about relationships. Oh, relationships. Uh, and we look, talked about those millennials, those 25 through 42 year olds. Yes. And then we, we yeah. And what, who else, what other generation did we cover? We talked about Vines, uh generation and that is Generation X. Then we talked about the baby boomers. Um, that's uh past what's that sixty and and uh to a hundred? Is that is that correct? I ain't somebody saying gonna that. Get, somebody go get you. I'm staying in the same zone. So the, the baby boomers are fifty six to seventy six. Hey, we thank God. We thank God for every generation. We love the baby boomers. We love yes. every generation. Look, yes, like yes. and share, comment, please. Uh, I see a couple of people. Uh, Lauren like is Shannon on the Kermit. line. Yes. Hey, Lauren. Sister Galloway is on the line. What's going Sister on? Galloway. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. So look, we going to get in the knee. Look, look. Uh, tonight, if you want to tell your business, this is the platform you can tell your business. And uh, definitely no judgment. You might get some from some other folk in the comment section. But trust you me. That's just Vanya and myself. We will not judge you at all because everybody has a story and everybody has baggage. Yes. Tell me more. Okay. Um, so uh, I was in a grocery store the other day and um, what I did was when I was going shopping, I went through every aisle in the grocery store. Most okay. people, uh, when they're shopping uh, around for something, uh, relationship uh, is the metaphor that I'm going with. Most people don't like to check out the whole store. They just check out one part. They see one thing that they like and they say, oh, that's what I need. When in fact, there's other stuff that you need that the store provides. And everything that looks good to you is not good for you. I'm trying I think to we tell you. all can attest to that. I'm um, to tell you. Relationships have affected credit scores. Yes. Ooh, living, God. living situations. Ooh, People have God. went to having a home to being homeless. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying yes. to tell you. Yes, I, yes, yes. Mean yes. Some things. Uh, tra trauma is real. Uh, relationships uh, have produced trauma. Uh, some some things have been like very traumatic. And yes. how we deal with those relationships, you know, again, we talked about the many different variables uh, that people bring into a relationship. You know, background, how you was raised plays a huge important part of how Absolutely. you interact and how you engage inside a relationship. And so uh, I think the advice was given uh, that uh, first we need to interview a person. And yes. Sister Vanya, Sister Vanya, oh my gosh, Sister Vanya was just prophetic the other week. Lord have mercy. <laughs> 
you, you talked about trauma, Reverend Skinner, and we know that um, a lot of PTSD, post-traumatic uh, stress, stress syndrome, come from trauma, right? Yep. And we talked about how a lot of people take this PTSD into other relationships, also known as baggage. Bag oh, go ahead. Yes. Look at that. See, also see. known as baggage. And we become bad people where we're taking bags from one relationship instead of the um instead of closing the door first, having a healing period, and then moving on to the ooh, next. We, ooh, tonight gonna be good. Sudana, sis, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Ooh, we the and we get and told y'all about those car doors. Remember y'all? <laughs> yeah, them car doors. I'm trying to tell you, don't touch no car windows out. Don't take no tires. They just take the door handles off. And now you can't go nowhere. Cuz I see you. I see you in the morning, man. I gotta get my hair cut. Uh, wait, man, wait I, what's the girl who made that song? I bust the windows out your car? <laughs> uh, Sullivan. Uh, 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 y'all help me in the comment section. Uh, I can get a first name. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. But I'm telling you, man, if you want to avoid busting windows out the car, slashing tires, or taking the door handles off, or setting your uh, setting somebody place on fire, on uh, fire. check yourself and check the person that you're going with. And so most times, you all, uh, uh, what grandma man used to do uh, when they were going to the grocery store, they have a list of items that they need. And so tonight, let's see, uh, Sister Vanya, if we can carve out. Bessie, I see you. Uh, let's, Jasmine Sullivan. Thank you, Lynn. Jasmine uh, Sullivan. <laughs> Jasmine Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, we're going to carve out a grocery list tonight. Um, amen. Uh, we know that we put God first. Amen. I know. God, my first. That. God always go first. You pray yes. uh, for uh, who God needs to send your way. And best believe God will send it if you ask him for it. Yes. It needs so, to all... Um, Put God first place and everything else will fall in place is my testimony, amen. And when you're in a relationship with someone, there's always three people in the relationship. God is the head of that relationship and then you and the other person. Leo, so I see you. Can win. Yes. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Lord, mercy, I mean, you talking tonight. I mean, golly, listen. The night is gonna be good, amen. Uh, this is for who, who? 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 are we trying to talk to tonight? Single people, uh, married people, uh, relationship people, complicated uh, 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 relationship status people. It's complicated. Uh, it's complicated. <laughs> the complicated status. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Lynn said you have to remember ask for the right person. That's right. We gotta ask God for the right person. And what All about right. asking God to remove the wrong person? You know what? And, and that's a biggie. So a lot of times uh, when we ask God to remove the person, some people believe uh, up under the assumption that God is literally going to take them and he can do, do that. God has all power in his hands. Absolutely. But if you keep sending the invite to that person to come back, then you're undoing what God, uh, what you ask God to do. And so Absolutely. a lot of times uh, um, God reveals uh, through situation and events and situ uh, circumstances uh, who needs to be in your life and who don't need to be in your life. And they say, uh, if there's any red flags, and I believe Sister Vine, you mentioned this last week, if you yes. see those red flags, please stop at them because I can tell you right now, I didn't have many accidents in my life. Why? Because I did not yield at the stoplight or the, or the, or the red flag. Yes, you did not close the door. Yes, I agree, Reverend Skinner. God will convict your spirit where those red flags become so glaring. Um, but sometimes I know I can only speak from my own experience. We, I have operated on self-will and I'll pray and I'll hope that things change. So I will accept the behavior even though I know the behavior is not right and is not conducive to my well-being and pray and hope that the behavior change. But I have learned through the years, it's the song that starts like that, um, but I have learned through the years that a person's only going to change when they ask God for yeah. yeah. To change. Um, and you talked about this last week. You hit on this where you said 
know what stage the person is in in their life. And, and, and not to be uh, negative, but you'll see a person that was in their 20s and they were a cheater or they right. were a liar or, or, or they, they, they um, abused the other person. And then right. you'll see that same person in their 40s and they're just an upright person who don't do any of that. That's right. So you mentioned stages of life and we all go through stages, but you know, you can hear a person um, say that this person was so um, negative and had such negative behavior back in the day, but you see that person in a day and they've been totally delivered. Yeah. So mm. I agree with you when you talked about the stages. Like, comment, and share, because I believe y'all got a lot to add to that one. I'm trying to tell you, I'm looking at yes. the comment section, and Sister Perry, I see you. And Sister <laughs> Bessie said, sometimes we don't uh, want to see it. And man, you ain't lying, because guess what? Uh, uh, in the words, I don't know why we, we bring them up, but like I said, it's OK. R. Kelly said, my mind is telling me no. And my body's telling me yes. <laughs> and a lot of times we be in tune with that body. And I'm trying to tell you, it will see you off many times. Yes, the flesh. Man, the flesh will rise, man. And, and look, you got to get that flesh under submission uh, yes. to the spirit. Amen. And so yes. we, we, we going to maybe go church tonight. All yes. right, right, right. right. So, so I'm telling you, but I, yeah, you got to know and, and uh, you got to know the stages. Uh, the phases and the seasons um, that people are in uh, because uh, depending on the season or the stage or the phase uh, that people are operating in, uh, people act differently. Of course, they make adjustments to whatever season, phase, or stage uh, of life that they're living in. And so okay. you have to ask yourself, uh, what role do I play? A lot of times we get frustrated in relationships because we have it in our mind. This is who we need to be. Uh, when in fact, uh, what, what should happen is you got to ask yourself, really ask them, who do you need me to be right now uh, in this current season or situation or whatever that you're living in? So you want to be careful. Big Lynn, Big Lynn is my barber. Uh, uh, he says in the comment section, you have to have patience and let God send that person. A majority of the time you choose the person who isn't even in your path, God already selected it. And we alter his plan, and it takes longer for his plan to evolve. Yes, Big Land, and Big Land, uh, let me know if I overstep the boundaries. That's also my cousin. Big Land is about to get married. He's All getting right. married in Congratulations. September, or October. I got All the invitation. Right. I'm going to be there. Uh, Big Land, oh my gosh, that is so true. And God has selected for us uh, who we need in our life. And uh, a lot of times, uh, we we go off of what our, our, our body uh, wants and desires. And so what our body wants and desires may be different from what God wants for us. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's funny you said that because uh, my late pastor used to preach about that a lot. And uh, sometimes, you know, we want the, as a and I can talk about myself. You want the tall, dark, and handsome. And God yeah. might not have tall, dark, and handsome for I'm you. Trying to tell you. The total opposite. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell you something. You may want a Coca-Cola bottle. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that may not even be the case. Uh, that may not be uh, the situation uh, that you're having. Uh, sometimes what you want in life, um, uh, you can't have it. So again, you got to ask yourself the question, uh, is this really what I want? And sometimes yeah. you get what you want and then you can't have what you want. Absolutely. And this looks like Sister Flowers on. Okay, Sister Flowers, all right, she was on. All right, she go on now. What okay. happened to her. You could have joined in. I, I thought she had something she wanted to say. But that's all right. right. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. And we will have guests on. We want um, people to Zoom in with us and give us their opinion on different topics, of course. Absolutely, we will have guests come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, because we want to get in your business too. I mean, I'm absolutely, just so, absolutely. Want to hear what we want to hear what's placed on your heart. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And we gonna yes. get in your business a little bit too. But no, um, but no, that that is so true, man. And so many times, 
Uh, I know for me, I've made many mistakes. A lot of times I found out uh, in some situations, I did not know what I wanted. So because I did not know what I wanted, I settled for anything. And then when I got knee deep into it, I found out and figured out this is not what I want. Absolutely. You talk about that. And sometimes I've learned in my experience that sometimes you're in a dark space in your life where you could have just came from a tragic relationship or a relationship that didn't work out, or you can feel like have pressure on yourself about not meeting or exceeding the goals you set for yourself or being yeah. just a dark space in your life. And you'll just accept someone into your life knowing you're not mentally ready to receive that person. And then when you come out of your dark space and see who this person really is, you realize, mm, I probably shouldn't should have waited until I got through what I was trying to get through before adding somebody into my life. And a lot of times that also causes chaos and destruction as well. You know, um, the arguing, the disagreement, and um, the word compromise is not considered in the equation because you don't know each other. That person presented somebody who, you know, the club representative, as I call them, and then you were in a vulnerable, dark space. So you was presenting who you were truly were not. And right. then when you both see each other for who you truly are, you find that you don't really like it. <laughs> Man, and, and, and you know, one of the biggest mistakes we make, thanks, Big Lynn. You say we on fire, uh, Sister Perry, I see you. Uh, again, like, share, and comment. Um, one of the biggest mistakes we do of uh, make is a lot of times we get physical with the person uh, before we actually uh, get to know them. Ooh, talk about you. that. Yes, we are in the yes, ocean yes. tonight. That's right. We out of yes. shallow water. This wrong yes, yes, yes. And then when once we get physical, um, yeah. I heard a pastor say this once, and I totally believe it. Um, when we get physical, there's a covenant that is formed. Oh, yeah, talk about it. And that. then um, when we don't want to be with a person anymore, and then we, we ask, why is it so hard to leave this situation? Because there was a physical covenant formed. Yeah. And now the covenant has to be broken. So mentally, like you said, your body, you know, was there or is there, but your mind is not. And you don't know why you keep running back. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. I mean, you talk good. Yeah, man. When you get physical with somebody that covenant is made. You in trouble. Lauren <laughs> says staying in a relationship out of obligation is another mistake that a person can face. That yes. is so true. We stay in situations uh, for many different reasons. Many and different reasons. That person is one helped of them. me. Yes, that person helped me when I was down. So I owe them. I feel like I owe them. Um, that person is paying my mortgage in my car. No, getting my nail hair, nails, hair, Jordans. I don't want to lose that. You know, right. um, that person is ill. I feel right. obligated to take care of them. I fell in love with the kids. I feel an obligation to stay because of the kids. Oh, my gosh. You, I mean, the, I'm, so we to kids, the mother of my kids. I'm obligated. I feel obligated to stay. Yes, 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 yes. And, and here's a big one. I don't want to start over because I'm scared that I might get something worse than what I got. Oh, gosh, man. I'm trying to tell and you. And not being optimistic that God might have something better in store for you. Trying to tell you, you may not be six foot seven, uh, got abs and all of that. Uh, and Big Lynn, Big Lynn, we on the same team. But listen, <laughs> it's a guy, it's a guy, it's a woman out there for you. Uh, I know, I'm, I see, I know a couple of married folks that's on the line. Uh, and, and we got a mixture of people on the line. But man, God got somebody for you. Uh, yes. But the thing is, see, uh, many people, 
uh, always talk about harvest. We want to always uh, reap the harvest, but we don't want to do the work to reap the harvest. Ooh. First, you got to get your soil together. Most folks start planting seeds and your soil ain't right. And now you're wondering why you ain't producing nothing. Yes, yes, yes. You cannot uh, improperly plant seeds and expect to get a full garden. No. So you got to put in the work. I mean, the work has to be put in. And I've learned that self-improvement, putting oh, the work in on yourself first. Trying to tell you. Trying to tell you, man. That's will attract a whole different crowd. You I'm know? trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. So now, um, now let me ask you this question. Yes. Uh, and, and, and look, this is good barbershop and beauty salon talk. Okay. Uh, can a lot of times, can you attract crazy people? Yes, yes, yes. I think um, in my experience, you, you know, attract, depending on what you give off is what mm -hmm. you're going to get. Like, okay, and I'll just talk about me be a little transparent today. Go ahead, yes, right. yes, that's the time, y'all, let's go. And I knew you were fishing. Okay, so I have this room, um, I, I consider myself uh, very optimistic, um, see the good in, in most things, um, very bubbly type person. And I get a accused, like I address every woman in my life, I see on the street, my family, I address them by saying, hey, beautiful, because years ago, somebody said that to me, a woman said that to me, and I was in a dark space. And when she said that, it just reached my soul. And I didn't even know her, but it made me feel so good that I wanted to give that back to somebody else. So okay. I'm always complimenting man, woman, boy, or girl, and always saying, hey, beautiful, and looking at the upside of things, right? And um, I've been accused of being flirtatious. Uh, I men, have too. I yeah, too. that's not even my agenda. That's not my motive. And I get it when people say that that seemed flirtatious to them, but I know what I'm putting out. If you receive by me saying, hey, brother, that's a nice suit you rocking that. Your shoe game is on point. And if you receive that as, oh, she want to walk down the aisle with me. That's I'm, trying to, you, I'm <laughs> trying to tell you, uh, even worse, even before I got to be real tonight, that was okay. walk down the aisle. She want, she want to sleep with me. Uh, right, 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 right. See, 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 yeah, she want me to go ahead and take care of that. No, man, that, no, no, man. That's not what it's for. And I know many men. Uh, uh, cause it ain't just women. You got some men out there. As soon as they get a compliment, oh man, did you hear what she said? And I'm like, she yeah, wants did, me. You, <laughs> did you hear what she said to the other guys too? You gonna get your feelings hurt out here, man. Don't right. take it like that all the time. Just take it as yeah. a compliment. And I, I would get accused too. I am a very engaging person. Yes, you and, are, Reverend Skinner. So, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm just serious. And so a lot of times my engagement uh, can be taken uh, taken, taken out of context and people uh, people think I'm sending out an invitation. I'm like, I ain't even sending out an invitation. I wasn't even thinking about you. Absolutely. And um, so your question was, can you attract crazy, right? Um, yeah. I think you have to be careful, especially today, because a lot of people suffer from unknown, especially if you don't know them, um, mental issues, you know, yeah. and we don't know what we could do or say to cause a person to snap. So yeah. I think that when that person comes to you because they feel like they received your compliment or whatever you said as something other than that, I, in my experience, I've learned to stop. Right. Check them. Tell them, you know what? It's not like that. I just really like those orange shoes. And I'm so happy that you stepped outside and wore them because most men don't wear orange shoes. But those look nice. And I just wanted to share they look nice. But I'm happily um, in a relationship. I'm good with that. I was just complimenting you on your shoes. Oh, especially when you comment on Sister Boom Boom in the church. I'm trying to tell you. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Sister Boom Boom would take that thing to a whole nother level. Next thing you know, you know, me and him, we talking about getting together. We ain't never had a conversation. You say, right. what? Yeah, oh, my God. So, I, you know, again, 
Uh, I know that I'm very cautious. Um, I know with uh, some of the, the senior women, uh, I know I could pass out a compliment, uh, but the ones that's around uh, our age, if you will, Sister Brian. Uh, a big gap between our ages, but okay, I get you. I told you, see, I'm telling you, I'm telling you she was going to tell it tonight. I was trying to give her credit tonight, but okay, all right. But I know that I'm careful uh, because I never want to give off a uh, shivery is not dead. Uh, I am, uh, my parents raised me the right way. I do open doors, you know, I do. Amen. Uh, those, I do those things, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel that's what we're supposed to do. And I also feel uh, that uh, it's my responsibility uh, to build up our women, especially our black women. Uh, because Absolutely. so many times, uh, social media has a way of degrading and uh, tearing down our black women. And so yes. I'm like, all right, so I have a responsibility to make sure that I build up our black women. I agree. But in doing um, so, I'm not trying to sleep with you. <laughs> tell it, tell it, tell it. <laughs> Make it crystal clear, Reverend Skinner. We're going to talk good tonight. I'm trying to Yes, get yes. There's so much uh, dysfunction, and a lot of people thrive off of dysfunction. So I think um, we all have to be careful, know our motives. Um, in insane stuff and um stopping it if it goes mm -hmm. into another direction you know mm -hmm. um just stopping it right there no i'm not on that this is what i'm on i was just complimenting you um i think promoting black love is important all around um i i love to see a couple that's been together 50 60 years and that's right. uh, you know, walking around happy, smiling, and, and and also with that couple that's been together a year and on fire and still together. So right. I think it's very important to promote Black love, period, because as you said, Reverend Skinner, the media, social media, the news, all, um, sometimes they give a negative impression like we don't love each other and we are very loving, affectionate people. And the, don't let these reality shows for you. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, man, yes. Man, I'm just saying though, man. Yes, man. So <laughs> like I said, uh, we just have to be real tonight. Uh, one of the things that you need to be in tune with, because uh, like I said, uh, mama and them, grandmama and them, before they went to the store, they knew exactly what the house needed. Uh, as, you're, as you're going, first of all, you, you, you pray and you ask God. Um, uh, um, and then also uh, in while you're looking or whatever, while you're grocery shopping, uh, what, what one of the things you need to be in tune with is what does your house need? Mm. Yes. And I, I think that is real important, you know, as the Bible says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So right. if you, um, on that grocery list, if you find somebody is, you know, not on that page, and there's a lot of people out there who's not on that page, there's something to consider. Some people can be persuaded, um, but some people standing on what they believe. Yeah. So I think that is really, really important, and I think that list should um, go into what you will and what you're not going to accept. Mm, yeah, be very clear about uh, what you don't like and what you're not willing to do. Absolutely. Uh, communication. I always tell people, uh, I'm the type of person, uh, Sister Vanya, uh, I, I always ask people, what does that look like? Can you tell me more about that? Because I don't ever want to assume that I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so I always ask specifics. And so people can accuse me of, oh, man, you ask too many questions. I ask those questions because I'm really trying to understand where you're coming from. And I want to make sure that I honor what you're saying. Yeah, I agree. I ask questions because I want to know what you're saying. But I have to admit, I'm a little nosy, too. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm Real. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm a little nosy too, but I like Reverend Skinner when you always say, "What does that look like?" Because I've said this before on our uh, format, but what does it look like for me? That gives me a mental picture, you know, of the situation. What would that look like? You know, I could say I want this, I want that, but what would that look like for me? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, um, so it, 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 I love that statement because it makes you really think what would that look like? You know, um, like my late pastor again used to always say, we can ask God for certain things, but then we have to ask him again to take those things away. Because some, hey, go ahead. Mm -hmm. some blessings bring about uh, burdens. Like if you ask God to bless you with a million dollar house, um, that million dollar house comes with a tax bill. How are you going to pay the taxes? We ask for these fancy cars, you know, how are we going to keep up with the maintenance? So um, a blessing can also come with a burden if you're not ready to receive it. Ooh, God. We can ask God for this super hot model type person, but when you see everything that comes with that person, are you ready to deal with it? Oh, Lord have mercy. And then, oh my gosh, you just open up so many paths. My mind over here is going uh, in so many directions. Uh, that is so true. Like, oh my gosh, man. Um, it, it, oh my God, I'm speechless right now. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> um, and I'm just noticing um, a lot of, I don't know, I know it's just not the millennials, so I'm not going to pick on you guys, but... Right, um, we're ready. We're ready. I know y'all ready. But <laughs> I just... I, and I'm sure we were like this when we were you guys' age, but all the chaos, the drama that goes into the relationship. And then I'll ask... Because I have a lot of millennials in my life, and I'll ask, well, why are you guys still together? And they say, oh, I love them. So it's like they don't hold on to the argument, to the fight, um, the ones I know. And the fight could be very dramatic and big, you know, verbal fight, altercation, disagreement. And then the next few minutes, but I love them. I'm going to always be with them. And I just go, wow, OK. So noticing it a lot with the millennials in my life. Okay, yeah, uh, a lot of times, uh, because what happened um, with uh, millennials or any group, uh, we have we have different communication styles. And a lot of times we don't know how to handle things. In this age, um, at one point in time, it was apropos to keep your business to yourself. Okay. Now, uh, we had we had a lot of sitcoms like the Cosby Show and Living Single and all of those shows, but now we uh, we embrace the um, the era of reality shows, okay. and a lot of times reality shows are not reality; they're scripted. And so uh, sometimes what we do is we reenact sometimes what we see on the reality show. So a lot of people and I, I, I'm going to put it out here. I got some Facebook friends. So, you know, I okay. uh, got some Facebook friends. They want to put their business out there. They, they, they get on Facebook live and they crying and all of that. And they cry for like 10 minutes. And, and then they start telling all of their business. Uh, Facebook is not that place to uh, tell uh, uh, what's going on because again uh, Facebook is not the therapist unfortunately um, a lot of a lot of millennials and also other people in uh, other generations uh, we go to social media and that adds to the drama of the relationship because now you're trying to fight off everybody else uh, that has put in that two cent and then you turn around and say everybody want to be in my business you put your business out yes. there and you notice with social media, you're going to always get somebody to back you, especially yeah. if it's something negative. You're going to get a lot of people. Like if you put a crying emoji on there. Wrong. What's wrong? What's wrong? And, and, and or if you change your relationship status, what happened? What happened? You know, um. So yeah, you know, the thing about Facebook, like when I used to tell my daughter when she was a lot younger about the uh, suggestive pictures, I'll just say, I would tell her, yeah, you if you put that on social media, all the guys that you would be attractive to are not going to be the only ones to like your picture. It's going to be people that like your picture who 
you would never talk to in a million years. And if they comment on your picture, you're going to feel like they're disrespecting you or you're going to be angry. Like, why he comment on my picture? I said, but you, when you put a picture out there on social media, what you're doing is giving everybody on there the opportunity to comment on your picture. So you might want to ask yourself, should I put this out here? Should I put this comment out here? Because you might get a lot of feedback that you don't like and a lot of feedback you can't get out of. Like, I'm, I'm going to give you guys an example of putting things out there on social media. But um, one time I, I know a millennial who put out there, um, I don't like Chris Brown, the singer. And that person got hundreds and hundreds of negative comments that they were not ready for from all of Chris Brown's supporters. And that's just a simple thing. A lot of times we, we might fall out about an artist, you know, they might not sing right live or they might not have on something, you know, or they might stand for a political party we don't like. They might do something in public to make you dislike them um, yep. in their public life. And if you put that out there, you'll be surprised at how many comments and how much feedback because th that person has so many supporters. Um, yep. So, you know, that kind of um, kind of went off the relationship topic a little bit, but you just made me think about it. We got to understand what we're putting out there. Yeah, and I'm looking at the comment section now. Uh, Big Land, he says, it looks good on the outside, but be a clunker. And then he asks, have you guys ever heard the term, if everyone knows your business, you have no business? And then Sister Perry said, everything that glitters is not gold. Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. Oh, my gosh. And so I, a, lot of times, a lot of times uh, we sign up for stuff and a lot of times you think you're making car payments on it and you ain't doing nothing but paying interest on it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and a lot of times, you know, um, just 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 pray about it, my suggestion, pray about it. And you know, the red lights, I mean, your spirit will convict you and tell you when things are not okay. And um, I will go with that. Go with that, because you're not crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, and then also, like, when you do get a, in a relationship, um, um, you need to ask yourself, am I renting or am I owning? Am I trying to own one day? Hmm. And in layman's terms, are you speaking of, am I dating for marriage or am I dating just to be dating? Yeah, exactly right. Exactly. exactly. Those I are some good things you want to talk about. Yes, yes, yes. And you, you want to talk about the things that are important. Religion is important. Having yeah. a relationship with God is super right. important. Right. Um, and if that person's not on that, mm, right. Look, at, look in the Bible, uh, uh, Samson and, and uh, the Philistine woman that he married, uh, he had uh, a God, and then they had uh, Dagon was their God, which was a uh, fish that they worshipped. And mm -hmm. Dagon had no power, and, and Samson God had all power in his hands. Yes. So a lot of times, uh, those things end up colliding against each other. And as you see for Samson, it didn't work out. He ends up getting a haircut, and he lost all his strength. And a lot of times, uh, because uh, uh, we're 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 in the wrong lane or we're in the wrong place, we end up losing our strength and we end up losing our wherewithal, all, all because uh, we looked at what we thought looked good, uh, but it wasn't good for us. It's just like uh, I don't know. I it was I ain't gonna name this chick. I don't think we Facebook friends. Um, I went over. Uh, a chick had prepared dinner and everything, and um, the dinner I mean it was laid out. Okay. Collard greens, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, uh, pot roast, uh, macaroni and cheese. I mean, she had laid it out and wow. it looked beautiful. I mean, oh my gosh, it looked so beautiful. But boy, when I sat down and tasted that food, that food was horrible. Really? Wow. Yeah, it was horrible. I said, what's that? <laughs> Ooh, we, I was disappointed. Did you tell her her food was 
Not good. You know what? She was so excited about doing that. Um, and so I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't say, Ooh, this is good. I'm gonna be like, man, you, you did this for me. You didn't have to, I said <laughs> stuff like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, 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 yeah. But speaking of that, that's funny. But speaking of that, people, you know what? I am telling you, like you mentioned Samson and you know, he Samson knew he wasn't supposed to date outside, you know, outside with the yeah. woman. I mean, he knew that from the from the get-go. He knew that. And 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 my segue into that is a lot of times our friends and family. Um, because they love us, they can see stuff yeah. we do because we all infatuated, you know. Um, yeah. you know, he took me to the signature room, you know, right. we took a, a walk on the lake and he, he brought flowers. So, yeah. but friends, people that love us will be like, I don't know, girl, something about him. Did you Google <laughs> him? Did you look up his background? He must be, you know. So, um, I've learned that sometimes, you know, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes it's worth listening to those people that love you because they could see stuff you don't see. And yeah. in my experience, just being transparent, the people, the guys that my family and friends told me they didn't like, it didn't work out. You know, I didn't see that at the time because I had blinders on. And then, you know, guys say stuff. Oh, Uh oh, oh, so Brian, you were saying something good and uh, can't hear you no more. But she was saying something that guys do. Uh, Big Lynn, you said not my mama biscuits. Yes, 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 yes. Not my mama biscuits off of Martin. I love it. I love it. And you know what? Sometimes uh, you got to be careful of the ones um, who likes to say, uh, I want to give you the whole world and they ain't even been um uh, uh to indiana or they ain't been nowhere in the united states how you gonna give me the whole world and you haven't been across the world what does that even look like man and so so many times uh, uh people give you so many empty promises um uh, they give you empty promises about what they gonna give you and what they gonna do for you and man you end up man look i'm gonna tell you something uh, relationships is, uh, and, and I have some married folks uh, that are on the line, uh, and I love, I'm going to have some of you all on the, on the show, so y'all get ready. Uh, Big Lynn, Sister Galloway, Sister Perry, y'all get ready. Lauren, you get ready. Uh, Bessie, all y'all, y'all get ready, because y'all going to be on here. We're going to talk good, but man, I'm going to tell you something, man. Be careful of the ones that uh, want to give you all these great things all up at the front. Um, I, I was just talking about Sister Vanya, and, and please go into what you was just saying. Uh, <laughs> Guys, I was getting my other device prepared because I don't know what happened, but I was preparing my other advice. So I, I take my own suggestions, just so you know. Um, I was just saying about the friends and family. Um, like I, I said, I don't know how much you heard or didn't hurt, but I was saying that Samson knew he wasn't supposed to be with that Philistine woman. He was told in the beginning. And then he was told again by his family. Um, and he went with that. He wanted to be with her. Um, and as we know the story, it all went downhill. But um, people, you know, our family, friends, people that truly love us will tell us because we're so flattered. You know, we're flattered by the just meeting this person. We're flattered by how much attention they're paying to us. We're flattered about the dates, the, the flowers, the gifts, the candy, that a lot of stuff we can't see. And the people that love us, you know, are, are telling us like, girl, did you Google him? Did you check to see if he was married? Did you check to make sure he takes care of his kids? So they say that because they love us and in my experience, um, when my family and friends have told me about somebody and uh, the red flags they saw, um, it didn't work out. The relationships didn't work out. So I'm not saying let them totally tell you what to do, but it's worth listening to. I'll just say that. Yeah, and I've been in some situations 
uh, well, I was told, like, that ain't going to work. You need to leave this person. Alone. Look, I, I could be real tonight. Uh, mama done told me. Now, you know, mama know. Who would know women best? Mama know. Yeah. Uh, mama told me, mm -mm, that, you know, and she stayed out of it. But, ooh, we. I had to come back and say, mama, you was right. And, yes. and, and you know what? Funny. You, could be so caught, you could be so caught up on the person that if a person trying to tell you about somebody that you go with, you almost cuss them out because of how deep yeah. you feel about that person when, in fact, yeah. that person trying to guide you to the right, to the right place. Yes, and you could have just met them and you're defending them like you've known them a lifetime. That's because you're so caught up. And, and, and you say mama told you, but look, how about this? How about I had the family preacher tell me he wasn't right? The family preacher told me who I've known since he baptized me. And he oh, wow. was the family wow. preacher. And he told me he ain't right, Fanya. He's not right. He Don't do it. Reconsider. And I told that preacher, I said, I'm not going to call his name, but he know I love him and the preacher. Um, but I told him, I said, but I love him. <laughs> and then I saw him, right? I, I saw the family preacher like years, years later. And uh, when I first separated from that situation, I was kind of scared to run into him. But when I ran into him, I had to say, I know you told me. I, I, I know you told me. Yes, 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 yes. It's some yeah. people. That, it's some people, people that, that love us. Yeah. They try to tell you right, and just and they're not hating you. on you. No, they're not hating on you. They're trying to save you, and now you they in try. debt, man. Now you in debt, man. Now you got to go to court and everything like that, man. You all caught up and tangled up and all of this, and oh my you God. didn't co-sign. But yeah, you done co signed things, man. Relationship is done, and it's like, man, let me tell mm -hmm. you something. Man, yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you can go through some heartache out here. You can get to your last $2. And, and some of y'all ain't going to be real with me today, but some of us have been to our last $2 on some things. Yes, absolutely. We didn't hit bottom in the relationship area. And oh, um, a lot of people. Oh unfortunately carry that bitterness and resentment around with them um we talked about the bags and a lot of people carry that um that's why it's very common to hear statements that all men are dogs or you know those negative statements um when in fact we haven't dated all men none of us that's have. right that's called <laughs> cognizant cognizant <laughs> dissonant you all that's a clinical term you have not dated everybody, so you cannot make that assumption. Right, we haven't, so we don't know that to be true. And, 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 and if you look at it in a sense of like people of other races will say, well, all black people are lazy. That offends me and that probably offends you too because they haven't met every black person. They're just going with the stereotype. So one black person is not a representative of the entire black race. What? We know that. So, Check your research, y'all. Check your research. Exactly. research so, oh, there's not one representative who speaks for all of us because, um, you know, um, I'm not lazy. So, and I'm no. black. So right. if, we, if we offended by that, um, that same person should be careful to say stuff about all men or that man should be careful to say something about all women because we haven't you know it's a lot of people on this earth and none of us none of us have dated them all so we don't know we know the people that we've had experience with so yeah uh, i'm looking so, at a comment i'm looking at a comment right now uh that's from sister flowers shout out sister flower hey uh, sister flowers she says, today's generation of women do not care about being called the side chick. Ooh, go on, Sister Flowers. Tell us what you really want to say. Okay. <laughs> wow. You do hear those terms a lot. Side chick, dip, my dip off. You hear those terms a lot. Little mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my little mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, oh and I think God. that goes back to that reality show stuff that a lot of people are taking into the real world. 
It's the fake man, you know. Uh, you, you know what I dislike about real. I mean, this off the subject, but what I dislike about the reality shows are uh, the two people that have a problem, and then you got the one person that want to bring the people together. They bring them together, and then it's gonna be a fight scene. People go for that. Look, reality shows are scripted like the WWF wrestling. I just gotta be real. The wrestling is fake. It is. <laughs> Shout it is. out to my late sister friend Marilyn Williams, who was a, a lover of the wrestling stuff, and she loved it so much. But that was my wrestling buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But buddy. it was fake. It's fake. Uh, and, and a lot, a lot, a lot. You have you have those ones that don't mind being called sad chicks, and then also uh, with with some of the men. Uh, you have some men out there that don't mind that as well. Uh, because they want to settle. Um, I, you know, you see this a lot. Uh, you see this with women and also men. And so uh, a lot of times that stems from other things, other areas in your life. Um, insecurity. Childhood, childhood insecurity, all of those post things. Post-traumatic stress. Post-traumatic stress, all of that. All of that piece Not of wanting thing. to step up to the plate and be responsible and accountable. Um settling you said the first word best just settling you know and you know what uh i always and i tell people this too uh because i said we were gonna talk about it know your attachment style you got to know your attachment style so i did a test they actually have a quiz and i i encourage people um what's the website www.attachmentquiz.com i hope that's it y'all so, uh, attachmentquiz.com, www. Yeah. So, does it yeah. tell people if they're clingy? Uh, uh, so yes, something like that. Um, so it's about 25 questions. Okay. Um, and I took it. And uh, these are the four attachment styles. Let me see if you can guess mine. Um, you have secure attachment, you have anxious attachment, you have avoidant attachment, and you have fearful attachment. Hmm. Okay. So with me knowing you just a little bit now, it's been going on a few years or so. I'm going to say, okay, give them it to me again. We got secure attachment, secure attachment, anxious attachment, anxious attachment, avoidant attachment, avoiding avoidance attachment and fearful attachment. Okay. Fearful attachment. I'm just going to take this to what I believe. And I believe you are with the fearful attachment because I see you as a person who uh, cautiously go into things. Oh, well. So that's what I see for you. Now, what do you see for me? Um, I see secure attachment. From from what I know of you so okay. far, I see secure attachment. And 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 that's I think you hit it on the head because for me, security is everything. Um, okay. I was raised by my grandfather, and um, I I like security. I like being stable. Yeah. You know, so, um, I want it all. You know, a hundred percent of that person because I'm gonna give you a hundred percent of me. Wow. Um, the attachment that I'm actually am, I took the quiz. I am okay. secure. I am se secure attachment. Let me read what it says. Secure okay. attached people tend to be less anxious and more satisfied with their relationships. The okay. children who were securely attached were happy to explore and bring toys back to the parents. In other words, the parent was a kind of base that uh, they could explore around and come back to. Securely attached people have an easy time forming connections and have less doubt about the equality of the relationship. They also have an easier time reaching out for comfort. Okay. okay. That's that secure attachment there. All right. I like that. So, and give us the website again. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, Scienceofpeople.com slash attachment styles. Okay, attachment style. I'm going to put it in the comment section. Uh, I, I encourage people um, to, 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 to do it um, because, I mean, that plays an important role as well. So Absolutely. So tell us what the fearful attachment said. 
the fearful attachment. Okay. Uh, the fearful attachment says, uh, this is the disoriented or disorganized attachment. Uh, people with this kind of attachment live in an ambivalent mindset where they swing from being afraid of connection to overanalyzing the quality of depth of their relationship. They tend to get overwhelmed easily and have unpredictable moods. At one moment, they can uh, smother their partner and at the next, they can disappear for a day or two without explanation. Okay. Okay. And that's anxious. What is that? Uh, wait a minute, gosh. <laughs> that, <laughs> I immediately thought about Judge Mathis there. Because um, stuff he say when people disappear oh, for yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. He is hilarious. He right, is hilarious. He is, he is. What was that called? What attachment was that called again? That was the fearful attachment. Fearful attachment. Okay. All right. Well, take the quiz. Find out yeah. how clingy yeah. or not clingy you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, an anxious attachment. They're more afraid of losing their partner. Uh, they can become clingy, possessive, paranoid, or need constant attention. Okay. That can get on your mind. i be honest with you. I done dated some women with this anxious attachment. Yeah. What does that look like? Anxious attachment. Yeah. Um uh let's let's say I'm going out with the guys, right? Okay. Going out with the guys, she wanna come too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> if I'm with you and you you having a girls' night out, I don't wanna tag along. Like I'm cool. Like, all right, cool. Y'all go ahead and have a good time. Y'all do what y'all do. Uh, right. Oh my God, I need that constant attention, uh, constantly accusing you of cheating, uh, oh. very insecure. That's what it, that's what that anxious attachment looks like. Okay, okay. You don't and love was, me. If you love yeah. me, then you would know. No, whoa, 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 whoa. So it's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't experience that. I think we've all seen some of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, the I'm guy seeing is some, at oh. the baby shower. Yeah. Man, all right, so wait a minute. Oh, 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 I've been to a baby shower, but I was going to a baby shower because of a friend of mine. Uh, she okay. was pregnant. And one of my favorite games was Don't Say Baby, but whatever. Uh, but man, <laughs> that is, that, that will get on your nerves, man. And it's like, whoa. I, one I'm girl you, is the only girl at the Super Bowl party. <laughs> man, I'm trying to tell you, like, yeah, she came alone. It's like, man, like, you know, I, I need some boundaries. Like, oh, I love you. I want to yeah. be around you, but give me my space. I'm going to give you your space. It's like, hey, uh, but give me my space. It's cool. Yeah. Like, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be texting you or whatever. Uh, and I'm the type when you go out, I'm not gonna hit you up. Like, man, go on out, do your thing, enjoy yourself. I think it's funny you said that about boundaries. I think that's important too when knowing who you are, knowing who you want, and creating that uh, grocery list. Um, also, uh, boundaries need to be in there, you know, they're yeah. very important, you know, because if a boundary is not set, right, they're not gonna be honored. So if your boundary is, you know, I can, you know, if your boundary is texting other people, um, is not cheating, that might be his boundary. Yeah. So I think boundaries are um, definitely need to be discussed, know yours, know his, discuss them together, pray about them. And uh, yeah, because I think that's real important because one person's idea of a relationship is another person's not their idea of a relationship. And then a lot of people, in my experience, don't know how to be in a relationship. And your mm. values might not align with their morals and values. So, wow. um, yeah, so I think that should be discussed. Also, discipline, if you're, you're going to plan a family, discipline of children. You know, um, I think that's real, real important and something that you guys need to be on the same accord about how to raise our child. 
Um, it's oh, not because I'm the mama, but it's our child because there was a daddy. The daddy helped make the child. So um, definitely, I think uh, that's really really important. So we got a comment. We got a comment. Okay, let's hear it. I think attachment styles might change based on the type of relationship a person allows themselves to be in. If uh, you're with the right secure attachment, maybe the attachment style for that person, the wrong relationship would bring on insecurities, meaning the attachment style would be different. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think some relationships, especially when you're on the same accord, when you want the same things, I think it can go, that can be a secure attachment. But I think when um, this person shares their uh, background with you and they have been a serial cheater or, uh, you know, or abuser or somebody that was uh, egotistical and narcissistic and all for themselves. And I think you can get into the anxious attachment. Um, based on what they've told you and shared with them about their background. So you're kind of uh, anticipating it. Yeah. Hey, Lauren, let me ask this question. Because uh, I, 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 okay, I can agree with that. Can you experience all four attachment styles in a relationship? And Sister Flower said, but a real woman know how to have that trust in her man. Go ahead, Sister Flower. All right, Sister Flowers. Because of the way he show and treat her. Yes, that's right. A absolutely, Sister Flowers. And that's why I agree. If a person comes into your life and they show you um, that they're stable, they're secure, um, they're all about you and empowering and bettering you guys as a couple, then I, I think in a lot of other things, you can definitely be in the secure attachment because there's trust up front, you know? Um, but I think if a person comes and show you they're gone days at a time and come back, then I think, you know, that could put you in the anxious attachment. So what did Lauren say? Can we have attachments? Uh, she didn't respond yet. Uh, okay. I'm going to put, put the question back out there for Lauren. Do you think that we can experience all four attachment styles because I could, I could, I could agree with what she's saying, um, uh, but do you do you think you can experience all four attachment styles uh, at some point in the relationship? And you know, me personally, uh, I think you can uh, experience uh, all of those attachment styles um, at a certain point. You know, uh, because when you read this, uh, when you're going through sickness and uh, when you're going through ailments and all of that, your attachment style might change. You might become uh, that anxious uh, attachment. I think I think that's the right one. Um, uh, anxiousness. You get sick. Uh, you, you it crosses your mind. Am I going to lose my partner? Uh, exactly. Are they going to walk out on? Uh, so again, um, Lauren, she answered that question. She said, I think you actually can exclude all four in one relationship, but I don't think a person experiencing all four is in a relationship with the right person. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Well, I like that, Lauren, because I don't think nobody wants to be go through all those cycle of, of emotions that comes with all those attachments. So I totally agree. That would be overwhelming. <laughs> that would be, man. Uh, yes. You like, whoa. It's like, all right. Yes. Don't, don't act like Chicago weather. Listen, y'all, we've been having a good time tonight. Uh, yes. We appreciate you all for putting up with us tonight. Uh, look, if you want to carry this conversation, go right ahead in the comment section. Absolutely. Uh, definitely like, share. <laughs> like, share, do comment. all of those things. And we appreciate those that have liked, have shared, have commented. Uh, definitely, we appreciate everyone uh, that was involved yes. today. Uh, thank, thank you. you uh, because you all make the show what it is. Like, Absolutely. Really do. Without you, there's no us. Or okay. Reverend Skinner and I will just be talking amongst ourselves. <laughs> That's right. We'll be just chewing the fat. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, gosh. Yes, we totally appreciate you guys. We love it. We love this platform. So give us your suggestions and 
as we stated, we're going to have some invites on the show. Oh, so we, we look oh. forward to that. Yes, I, yes, I, I yes. I have to put this plug, and instead of I am putting you on the spot, uh, okay. I have a podcast. I have a podcast. Uh, it's called um, The Journey Within. And okay. um, this podcast, I do a Facebook Zoom live, and I record it on the podcast. It's uploaded uh, on so uh, all social media platforms. Okay. So uh, I will be having guests um, to come on. Uh, right now, we're discussing the differences between uh, being in the shallow water and being in the ocean. And so, Sister Vine, you have to be uh, you have to be on to talk about that because I referenced you in the last uh, podcast episode I uploaded on Mondays. Mondays uh, around seven o'clock, seven thirty is when I will go up and start having these discussions. Uh, my first guest will come on on the 20th of this month. Uh, shallow water versus ocean water. So a lot of people, we camp out uh, in the shallow water uh, because we think there's a lot of safety and security in that area, but we neglect other areas and we actually don't reach our self-actualization until uh, we leave the shallow water, until we get into the ocean. So the value, what I quoted from you was, <laughs> is that a lot of people get intimidated and, and, and make sure I got this right. Uh, don't get intimidated by the uh, body of water that you're in. Whenever you swimming and you get tired, start floating. Absolutely. And I love that. I love that. I'm a swimmer, guys. Um, and I, you know, when I was a kid, I stayed in the shallow. Um, but as I grew and like we all grew, this is like so metaphoric. Um, I challenge myself. I'm not going to let this 12 feet of water be. And one day yeah. I just jumped in. I'm just going to. Yeah. I did have some swimming skills under my belt, but um, I transitioned into oceans when I travel abroad because a body of water is a body of water. If you could swim, you could swim. If you could swim in three feet, which might be really hard for adult size, but um, you can also swim in a hundred feet. And yeah. um, if you get tired, just tread water or lay on your back. Yeah, definitely. I I love that example so much. I had to say it. Uh, I encourage people to go to Authentic Public Speaker uh, Brian yes. Skinner. Supporter uh, Skinner. He's a jack yes. of all trade, and he's an author. So. I like to say his story is worth telling. So uh, yeah, y'all, let's support our brother. Um, I love this collaboration that he and I have. And yes. I'm excited to where God is taking him, my millennial brother, and opening up That's so many fun. doors for him. And I just get excited when I see God blessing people. Um, and then they're turned around and blessing others. And that's Reverend Skinner. So um I appreciate yeah, that. I'm excited for him. So y'all support, support Reverend Skinner. And I he gave y'all a segue into our next Zoom platform. You guys, you got to catch him because he throws some. <laughs> he's very <laughs> subtle, but he's throwing. But like, remember with the Zoom etiquette, he was like, just a suggestion, but just do, do it. it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He's very yes. subtle. So you got to catch him, y'all. You got to catch him. And this generation Xer is keeping up with him. So y'all oh, got to keep up with him, too. So, um, it's, been, it's been a thrill. Thank you so yes. much, Sister Fine. You are awesome. Like, oh. oh my God. What God is, is, is doing, man, uh, in your life. Uh, uh, how you uh, came up with the concept, God placed it within your spirit, come up with Zoom suggestion, and then also we transition to this platform, uh, ask us. Uh, I appreciate being alone on this journey with you. And so, God, uh, I'm looking at the great things. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Go ahead. Oh, the great things. Oh, uh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go Amen. Go. That's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorites. I get so excited. And, you know, there's hope in Jesus Christ. Uh, I get excited about all the things God has in store for us, y'all. Uh, so uh, this pandemic, God's still on the throne. He got this. But OK, so I'm not a preacher, but I'm excited. <laughs> go ahead now. Go ahead now. All of us got a word. You ain't got to be a preacher. Yes. All of us got a word. Go ahead now. Uh, so, let me read uh, these uh, last comments and then yes. we got it. OK. Uh, 
uh, Reverend Smith, he said, no, that's a bit psychotic. All four in one, I'm scared. Sister <laughs> Flowers said, but at the end of the day, a relationship is dead without trust. Big Lynn said, and dead uh, is dead without communication. Uh, and, and look, we appreciate all of those comments. Uh, Great comments, guys. Personally, I do think uh, you can experience full attachment, life events, and all of that, and et cetera. Uh, I study people in the environment, stuff like that. I'm complicated a little bit. And, and no, I'm not saying that I exhibit all uh, four uh, attachment styles. No, I'm very secure. But, uh, and Big Lynn right. said, you sound like a preacher, sister. That's what Big Lynn said, <laughs> sister Ryan. Go ahead. She was hooping tonight. Go ahead. Did you hear that? Well, Reverend, Reverend Skinner's going to tell us next week. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring y'all y'all excited about it. next week. We're going to talk about um, the topics. He talked about the shallow and the deep water as well. Um, oh, go on that a little. But he also going to tell y'all next week what all those attachments in one relationship look like. Because I'm like Reverend Smith. I'm scared to see that person because that uh -huh. just seems really overwhelming. Ooh. But he's Ooh. gonna maybe he'll bring demonstration like pictures or something. But he's gonna uh, tell yeah. us what that looked like. <laughs> Definitely, I will. Um, um, and and I do agree with everybody. That is a bit psychotic and scary. Uh, but uh, but again, it happens. Just it's just the, it's the equivalent of a person saying, "Well, I'm strictly Democrat and I'm not Republican." On some things, you agree with the Republicans, and on some things, you agree with the Democrats. Absolutely. So so yeah, I love to dive into that. Uh, man, I'm looking for see Sister Vine. Sister Vine is slick, y'all. I just gotta put that. Out there. Sister Vine is slick, man. You, oh man, you would have thought she was a politician, but she said, she said, she's slick. I mean, you gotta watch Sister Vine. She just throws some things up in there, and then she smiles and laugh it off and everything like that, and she just told you what. So I look, you all uh, really appreciate this. Thank you for putting up with us again for another night. You will see us. Uh, next Friday uh, at Friday, the, uh, 8 30 at 8 30 look and uh, again like share and comment thank you yes. for 59 Please. comments tonight we appreciate yes. this and uh, uh have a, a great night go to sleep and wake up tomorrow that's that's yes. what I plan on doing in Jesus name in Jesus name God bless all right